Hello, I'm Anthony. Today I'm going to show you how to use a pre-existing MIDI song file to build a pattern bank group in Groove Agent. Now it goes without saying, copyright infringement is very bad. Don't plagiarize somebody's entire drum rhythm. That's wrong. If you pick very small sections of rhythms, what you're really doing there is taking the inspiration, the feel of your favorite drummers, the particular grooves that they play. You're using those to inspire your own musical creativity. This isn't going to be a video where I discuss the ethics of copyright infringement, but it is a really important point to note. As you'll see today, I'm taking out very small sections of rhythm from this drum pattern with the singular intention of then writing my own original music. Okay, so with that caveat said, let's get on with the process. As you can see, I've soloed the drum rhythm here. And as is very common with MIDI drum files, when you download them, all of the MIDI notes are absolutely tiny. Now, I find it very difficult to work with notes of this length. So the first thing that I'm going to do before I do anything else is set the minimum length for every single note in the drum pattern to something a little bit easier to process. So if I open my logical editor, I have this algorithm called set minimum length. Regular viewers of my channel might note that I used to have this set to 1 16th quantize. I've now taken it down to 1 32nd. So basically you can screenshot this um, algorithm if you want. If I select all of the notes in the MIDI part, what this logical preset set minimum length is going to do is set every single note to at least 60 ticks, which is basically a 30 second. Click apply and you can see all of the notes have just got longer. Really simple pre-process. I do that every single time. Now, eventually I'm going to get to the point where I'm chopping up individual bars of this drum rhythm, but I can't really do that until I've done some work on the quantization. Sometimes you'll get a MIDI note that just hangs over into a preceding bar. If I start cutting up bars, you're going to get this really awkward situation where you might end up with a MIDI note on the wrong side of the part. So in the bar that I've got highlighted here, beginning at bar 81, it's already been hard quantized. If I select a single note, all of these notes, as you can see, start at exactly zero. So this particular bar doesn't need any work doing on it, on it at all because it's already perfectly in time. But we're going to get to a drum fill at bar 84. The notes are nowhere near the bar lines and they're actually quite badly out of time. This is something that we're going to have to do a little bit of corrective surgery on. And this process where I'm running through the entire drum line, I've just picked out a couple of bars here. But I'm going to do this process on the entire song, listening to it bar by bar and just doing technical corrections before I even think about any kind of musical interpretation, which is the stuff that I want to extract. In just the same way that if you were preparing to mix a song, you'd arrange all of your audio tracks into various folders and groups, get all the technical prep out of the way before you get onto the creative side of things. I'm not doing anything creative here, I'm just fixing the MIDI. Now, as I'm importing various MIDI files and listening to the songs that I think that's an interesting groove, there's stuff that I can extract from it. I use Cubase's um, native import MIDI file which by default, and the default is absolutely fine, it uses Halley and Sonic to play all of these sounds. So what you're hearing at the moment um, is Halley and Sonic. Ultimately, I'm going to want to use Groove Agent, and this is the point at which I add a Groove Agent instance to my song. And at the moment, my go-to kit is the kit. Let's load that up. And finally, I can pick up the drum groove and drop it down onto the track below. Here's that drum fill played in Groove Agent. Mappings have gone well. They generally do MIDI file. Uh, mappings generally tend to work absolutely fine if they're in the standard MIDI note range. If all of the notes in your imported MIDI part come between B0 and B2, you're pretty sure to get a good mapping into Groove Agent because that's the MIDI standard and pretty much every drum manufacturer, plugin manufacturer, adheres to this standard, so it's just going to work straight out of the box. For acoustic kits only, you know, electronic kits, completely different situation. Now comes the part where we, where we start exercising discretion as to which bars we're going to want. If you're basically going to listen to the entire drum track, I feel like I'm kind of insulting your intelligence if I say something like, listen to it and pick out the interesting bits. You know, obviously that's what we're here for, but that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm listening to the drum rhythm as it goes. And every time I hear a bar, that contains, it might be um, a cymbal line that I like, it might be the ride pattern, something in it has a nice groove. I'm going to extract that bar, two bars, three bars. And each time I hear a bar that's clearly been repeated and is very obviously identical to, to something I've already selected, 
or contains a bar of rhythm that I'm not particularly interested in, I'm going to immediately delete it. I'm pretty brutal at this stage, otherwise you end up getting quagmired in hours of tedium. So it's probably going to take me about half an hour, another half an hour to run through this entire MIDI pattern, very quickly selecting out sections of uh, rhythm that I'm interested in. I'm going to jump forward to the point where I've already done that. And as if by magic, that process has just happened. So I've been through the entire song. You can see I've got a two bar section, three bar, three bar. In Groove Agent parlance, I would describe each one of these drum sections as a main. So these are basically gonna be the cornerstone, the foundation of any rhythm that I build. Now the really good stuff with drummers generally tend to come in their fills. So over here we have collected um, a section of fills that I liked. So as I've extracted each one of these MIDI parts, I've moved them around so that I've collected all of my mains together, all of my fills together. When I come to build the pattern bank, this is gonna make the next process much easier. Here's a fill. Okay, everything perfectly quantized, all good to go. Something else that I'm on the lookout for at this point is duplicates. It's very common if you're listening to a large song, you'll pick out a couple of fills, you really like them both. When you come to actually audition them all back, it turns out that it's the same fill played in different parts of the song. Now you might have very slight um, articulation differences in terms of the volume of the sounds that's played. I wouldn't put identical um, drum patterns simply with different velocities onto different pattern pads in Groove Agent. I think that's too granular, so I'll throw all of that stuff away. Now I've performed the majority of those um, deduplications already. I've just left one in. If I jump backwards and forwards between these two patterns, it's really easy to see. They're both the same rhythm. I can throw this one away. The next thing I'm going to point you towards is File, Export, MIDI File. Now can you see that I have a keyboard shortcut set up for this? This is a really important part of the next process. So you'll want to do this before you start. If we go into edit, key commands, and search for export MIDI file, you can see that I've got my keyboard shortcut control M, which overrode something else in Cubase that I was less interested in. But that keyboard shortcut is gonna be really important in a moment. Okay, so the next task is to take every single one of these drum patterns and create MIDI files for them. In that way, I have a permanent record of what I've done and I'm gonna load those MIDI files back onto pattern pads, but ultimately they're available for any number of uses. And this is how we do it. You select each MIDI part one at a time. Then you want to set locators to selection, which on my system is P in key commands. Here we are, locators to selection. After I press P, I'm gonna press Control M, which is the keyboard shortcut I've just created. Now you're going to need a folder structure in which to store all of this stuff. I've created myself a demo folder here, but basically wherever you store your MIDI files, I have a sample data disk. As you can see in MIDI files, drum patterns, I've created a folder called demo, and I'm going to call this main zero one. The zero is important because Groove Agent will alphabetically order the, the, these files and zero one just helps keep everything nice and neat. So now I'm going to press save. Export locator range is really important. You can see the options I have set. Automation and inserts, you can take or leave, but export locator range is really important. That's why we set the locator range as we did. Having pressed Control M, all of this is with my keyboard. This is why it becomes really quick to do. Press OK, and that's that saved. Let's do another one. Click the second part, press P, Control M. I'm still on my keyboard. I've not physically touched the mouse. Main 02, hit enter, OK, and it's done. The only time I need to go back to my mouse is to select the next part. And again, keyboard P, Control M, type main 03, enter, OK. I'll do the rest of the mains offline. And here are the fills. Same process though, P, Control M, fill 01, enter, OK. And finally, at the end, this is a bridge section, which really wants to have its own label because it bears no, re no resemblance to the main part. Let's just have a quick listen to it. It doesn't actually have any snare work at all. It's predominantly ride. So I'm going to call that a bridge. Control M, bridge 01. Pause briefly. There are all the MIDI files and we are done. So now I'm going to throw away all of that information. Let's head into Groove Agent and build the pattern group. And you can see I've already um, navigated to the folder where all of those files are stored. 
basically in the browser, just here we are in my sample data disk. Navigate down to your MIDI file section. And this part of the process is incredibly simple. You just pick up each rhythm and drop them onto a pad. Let's have a quick listen to one just to prove that they really are the rhythms that we've just created. There it is. And now I drop each one of these onto a pad in turn. If you had more than 16, which isn't the case here, you've got a decision to make. Do you want to keep a single pattern group? And then you'd be able to save it as an, a dedicated 16 pattern group. Or are you happy for it to spread across multiple pattern groups? That's not a decision that I have to face in this particular video, but obviously if you had 17 and you thought, you know what, I'm gonna trim one of those main patterns out, it's neater to have just 16, then obviously that would be really easy. And that's that done, 14 patterns loaded onto 14 pads. I can now click these pads, play those patterns for inside Groove Agent. Final little aesthetic job to be done is to select, sorry, a single click there, then held down shift to multi-select different pads. And now I can set the color of all of the main pads, different to the color of all of the fill pads. And the bridge can be whatever it wants to be. And we save that kit. Save kit as we'll store all of the pattern groups along with the, the kit that you've loaded for all of this, for all of this work. Save this as demo and say, okay. So now I can build a groove. Each of these main patterns is different length. You can see that's a three bar pattern there. Let's drag a fill out. Let's say I wanted an eight bar pattern with a fill at the end. So I'll put that there and I might choose to duplicate the first two bar section. And here's the finished product. I know that intrinsically I'm gonna have a lot of consistency between it. I've used the same pattern twice in this eight bar loop. Got nice little articulations, providing a little bit of extra interest. I'm gonna have the fill at the end, here we come. I basically built a user-defined style. Hope you found that useful. Please hit like if you did. I'll see you next time. Thanks very much.